Hello, and welcome to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract, and today we're going to explore dashes. Ooh, let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com, and we will reduce our exploratory music. Okay, we'll go into the code section, scroll on down, and hit copy on the template. Ba -doop -ba -doop. Just close that down, and paste. Now change the title. We don't want to see Zim frame fit templates out there in the world, so when you make a project, make sure you change the title, and we will call this one Zim Explore Dashes. I was going to say dash, dash, dashes. <laughs> How exciting. Dash, dashes. All righty. So we're in Zim 6.9.0. We come on down. Now let's just see what we've got now. We'll open this up in a browser. And that's what we have so far. That doesn't quite seem right, does it? Perhaps I haven't saved up. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Save your file. Save your file, then open in browser. That's handy. Okay, that's much better. Ooh. So let's um, make a dashed border on this. So you can make borders on this circle by saying, hey, how about a gray border? Gray, and then comma of, well, we'll do it sort of roughly normal, five in width. And then this last one is whether we want dashes. Now that's on a circle. On a rectangle and a triangle, we have to be a bit more careful because there's more parameters in rectangles and triangles. And then finally, later on, there's a dash. All right, so let's take a look at this now. We refresh, and there we have a dashed line on, on that. Oh, we can play around right away with dashes by just making them really big. I'm, 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 Dash line of 50 look like. Ooh. Cool. And this gives us some sort of Sputnik sun or something like that. Now note there's a bit of a gap problem there where that doesn't quite line up in our circle as we go around. You can play around with that with the radius. 102. See if that fixes it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it did. So it's just trial and error, sort of. That's that's one way. There's there's other ways, but anyway, that's one way. And so uh, that looks pretty cool, huh? Now we can control this uh, more so than by just making it big uh, and the color. Uh, we can also control it using a property of the of the circle that that comes out. So let's go to our documentation for Zim. Hit the docs and type in circle, like so. And we'll scroll down until we see the properties. So here are the properties. And you see how there's a color property that you can set the color. There's also a color command property, and that is available after. I mean, we can set the color right in the parameters, but after we get this color command, that allows us to do a linear gradient or a radial gradient or a bitmap gradient on the shape. But you have to do that after the shape is made. It's no big deal. There's also a border color command, which allows you to set those things for the border. There's a border width command, which allows you to set the stroke style afterwards for the width of the border, the caps. You've got You've got a, a property called border width, which is fine, but the border width command gives you more things. It's caps, joints, miters, ignoring scale. We Border dash command, though, is the one we're talking about now. Access to the stroke dash command. So that gives us segments and offset. Let's just copy that. And we'll put it up here like that. Segments and offsets. Those are two properties that we can change on the circle after. So let's try changing one of those. Well, first we'll have to put this into a variable. Our circle is equal to. And then we can say circle.border-command. Dot, first thing that came first, segments uh, is equal to. And this is an array of how 
wide the dash is, followed by how wide the space is. So if we said 50 comma 50, those are pretty big, like so. Let's see what our Sputnik looks like now. Ew. How about a little bit smaller? 20 comma 20. I think the default is 10 and 10. All right, so how about 30 and 30? Uh, 30 and 30. Now these don't need to be the same. So there's 30, 30. Let's bring that up a bit. 150. <laughs> cool. Do you like that? It's like a magic snowflake or something like that. Maybe it's a bit much. 100. And they, as mentioned, don't have to be the same, so we could make them really skinny. How about, uh, well, we'll go with 10 and farther apart. So these are far apart skinny things. Far apart skinny things. And we can well, I'll make them even farther apart if we want. We're exploring. There we go. That's <laughs> like a chopsticks in a, a bowl. Something we can reverse it as well and make them wider, but then closer together, like that. All right, so that gives us some idea of, of what that might look like. Let's try 30 and 30. Hmm, it's a little bit off there, so um, I want a bit more spacing. I'll try 40 and see if that is to my liking. Yeah, good enough. It's a touch fat, so we could reduce the radius just by, let's try reducing it by one and see if we get rid of that uh, extra little bump there. Yes, we did. So that looks close enough. Okay, so now let's take a look at the offset. So this was the circle dash command dot segments, and now offset is equal to, this isn't really going to show us all that much. Let's make an offset of 10 something like that. And we refresh here. No, you can't see because it just moved it. Uh, so next time I won't drag it, but we'll, how about we'll go to 44. Oh, oh, 444. It really doesn't matter the offset, just as long as it's some offset there. Did you see that thing shift? So that's just where the dashes are starting, the pixels as to where the dashes are starting. And that on its own isn't terribly impressive, but what's neat about it is we can animate it. So let's animate this property right here. Now circle.border-command is not a zim display object. Therefore we can't just say copy that and say dot animate on it because it doesn't have an animate property. Circle has an animate property and as a matter of fact we can <laughs> do the same thing by just animating the circle property. What we're basically going to do is this. We'll animate uh, the rotation, colon 360, in some amount of time, five seconds. Okay, and we won't bother with the offset at the moment, and we will see something like this. Okay, which is cool. So really, I suppose, uh, animating the offset on a circle is just the same basically as animating the circle. So let's adjust this a little bit. Let's go to a rectangle, a rect, and a rectangle, and we'll make this one how about 200 by 200. Orange, gray, 100, true, no. Uh, after the 100 for the border size, it's a pretty big border size. Let's just drop that a little bit to something more usual. Well, even 30 is big, but anyway, we'll be able to see that. And uh, let's make this purple. Gray is a little bit boring. Orange and purple. Brilliant. Frame.orange. Get back to the zoom colors. Okay, so can you see that all right? We're uh, animating a rectangle, 200, 200, orange, purple, 30. The next one is the, uh, the corner, I think. So we'll give it a corner of 20. The next one after that is does it have a flat bottom, which is false or null. And then finally, is it dashed? So that's a rectangle. And now we'll want to change the rectangle here and here, I believe. 
So now if we animate the rectangle's rotation, I think you'll see that it's not quite the same as on a circle. So the rectangle is animating around its registration point in the top left corner there. Uh, we could change the reg by center regging that. Center reg, not that it matters for what we're doing later. Center reg, and now the rectangle rotates around that. But obviously that doesn't look the same anymore as a marquee effect where this border will be moving around. So let's um, turn back to instead of animating the object, we're going to try and animate the border dash commands offset. So as mentioned, if we just take the border dash command here, like so, that won't work. The border dash command does not have an animate method. It does have an offset property, but it doesn't have an animate method. But what we can do is we can animate, use, we can use zim animate. So, uh, well, that one was zim animate too, but it was an animate method. Uh, originally, all of the zim methods were just functions. So zim animate, and we would have to say, what object we animate is the very first one, the target. Uh, and in this case, the target of the object we want to animate is rect.border-command. The next thing we want to animate is its offset property. Or So what property do we want to offset? Uh, and this is an amount, so we'll animate the offset up from 0 to 100 in this amount of time. So do you see what we've done there? Instead of using the animate method, we've dropped back to using the animate function. As a matter of fact, this animate function does not require the namespace. So we've moved this into the global namespace. Uh, it's, there's a few Zim functions, or Zim methods that were originally functions. They're all still originally functions on the Zim namespace. So any of the Zim methods, Zim fourth methods, let's just pop on out, see what those are. Here's our documentation. Uh, let me just reduce this a little bit. And get back on over there. Come along. Close that up and move to all of these guys right here. So all of these Zim methods like drag and set swipe and gesture and animate, all that kind of stuff, those are all also Zim dot loop, Zim dot wiggle. And then it just changes in that the, when you use it as a method like that, you just pass in the object as the first parameter and then follow any other par parameters. So that's what we're doing here. We're turning to the zim.animate. Now some of the more popular ones like animate that are useful as not methods, almost all of them are just really only useful as methods. They're operating on a zim display object. But animate and a few others, wiggle, uh, animate is useful on its own to animate things that are not Zim display objects, as we're about to see. So we could have left them all Zim dot, but we chose to turn a few of those into global namespaces uh, when the Zim namespace is turned off. So animate is one of those. So we can say animate rex border dash command object. So this is the target that we're animating. And we would like to animate this property, the offset property to 100 in this amount of time. Let's, uh, let's just make that 1,000. Okay, and let's see what happens now when we animate that. Cool. Isn't that neat? So we're animating the offset of that and getting that effect. Now we can also loop that. So if we want to start looping and doing other things, we'll probably want to drop to the configuration object. So we put the squigglies around that. We say target because that's the parameter name for the um, target that we want to animate. The next one is the obj. And the next one is the time. And then we can go to uh, loop colon true. And now depending on how this uh, is arranged, that might or might not look good. Uh, first of all, well, it doesn't look good. That loop is, is um, we have not quite animated a full distance, and it's so it's sort of jiggly. It's also going backwards. Let's adjust that so it doesn't go backwards. And we can animate it a much longer distance if we wanted to. So there's a long 
uh, distance. Oh no, that will go extremely quick. Have to make it a long distance and then increase our time as well. So there's a 10 second longer animation. Now note it's slow, it's slow and then it gets faster, blah, 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 blah. And then it slows down and then it does that thing and uh, does that sort of maneuver. Um, that's because of the easing. So if we say ease colon quote linear with a comma, then uh, that animation will stay at a consistent speed. So you were just witnessing easing at a very large scale, which meant it started off very slowly for quite some time and then sped up. So there's that uh, little glitch in there. Uh, that happens after 10 seconds. So you've got a choice. You can increase that so it's even longer. Um, let's just turn off that for now and make this uh, look like a marquee type thing. So where was our uh, 30? How about five? I don't know what we want for, for that to be a marquee. Well, there you go. That's That's going a little bit uh, quickly now, so we could just make that slow down by uh, making that there. Now we'll go half as fast, and we've got something like that. But I want to show you something. How about uh, we've we've gone a little bit long on this, so why don't I just show you a light show that I did recently? Uh, maybe before we drop out to the light show, let's go back to the Zim site and show you uh, where I was first working with the marquee in the examples. This one right here in the portal. So you see, we've just got that circle rotating. Oh, I, mean, I didn't even march those. Space. I love how space is so silent. Hey, this looks like the space from Zim Explorer, doesn't it? So that was one place. Uh, the other thing, though, I wanted to show you was a light show. So let me just go find that. And it was in a lights folder, which is just before the live folder. A lights folder in the sound house. And I believe it was called... Oh my goodness, that's getting big. Stratus, I think. Yeah, and there's Stratus Live. So we'll do Stratus Live, I suppose. Open in browser. Oh, it's not Stratus. Stratus is uh, that one. Um, that's not the late show I was talking about. Um, oh, it wasn't for Soundhouse. It was for my other light shows that I've been doing. That's just in the main one here. Uh, waves, vertical, tab, strips. There it is, strips. So let's take a look here. Open in browser. There they are. So what's happening here is we're animating a squiggle. Now that flash is on, uh, the flash that you're seeing there is on purpose just to add a little bit of um, something different. This is a light show we're projecting. And in the smoke, oh, this looks so amazing. It looked like those laser lights. And we could adjust them. We could make them uh, shorter to get. So there's uh, changing the segments, or we could make them farther apart like that. And we can also show one line at a time if we so desire, or both lines. So that was uh, the late show that we made the other day. Let's just see uh, how, how we did that. Here it is, it's called Strips. Boom, boom, boom. Um, we made a function called make line, and we're bringing in to make line color, a start type spacing size, flash time, vertical, and cycle times. All right, basically it's just a squiggle. So uh, here's a squiggle. We put the dashed of the squiggle onto true. And what are we doing here? We're accessing the points and wiggling the points. Don't worry about that. Here we are animating. So we first of all set the segments to whatever we passed into the function. So we saw how to do that. This is our squiggle that we made, whichever squiggle we've made. Uh, we've got the border dash command setting the segments, but we're also using the zim animate to animate the border dash commands offset some amount. That's just uh, how I was working out the amount at the time. We're looping and we're rewinding. 
So in that version, I don't know if you can tell, but uh, watch, it goes forward like that, and we've got the easing on it still, and now it's rewinding and going backwards. There was a hot key to turn the flashing off. I think that was it. Let's see if it doesn't flash anymore. Yeah, I don't see it flashing. So I used the, the keyboard to set a hot key so that if I didn't want it to flash. And you can see that, that what the rewind's doing. And when it rewinds like that, it means that you don't really care if it's looping properly because it just goes so far and then it, it comes back. I like that. So the next thing I want to try and do is animate the animate these guys, which isn't quite as easy. I think I can do it. It just means in a ticker like this, we have to make our own object. So how you would do that is make your own object. And then we could animate the size in and out. Uh, I would try it now if we weren't already a little bit lengthy on our Zim Explorer. We're trying to keep the explorers to 20 minutes. But uh, what you do is you make your own object, which so is var obj is equal to squiggly brackets, and put properties in there that you want. Then you can animate those properties. And in the ticker, you run this command and set those properties in here. Because this isn't just one property, it's an array. So you have to keep on remaking this array in the ticker to whatever Oh, shall we see it? You know, you, you probably want to see that now that you meant it. So var obj is equal to, it has a value of spacing. So this is, uh, spacing is given up above somewhere. And now we have an object that has our own property called sp with a value of spacing, which is something like whatever we're passing in, 10. There, we made a line. One of these is the spacing. 10, I think. Okay, great. Uh, so where were we? So we have our little object, and now we can animate that in the same way. So in the ticker here, what we'll do is we'll take this whole command, copy that command, put it in there. So constantly, what's going to be happening is it's going to set to uh, obj.sp instead. And we better move this one up just above the ticker because the ticker runs really quickly. It may be that the ticker tries to know what a OBJ is before that time. So we have a var OBJ with a spacing of whatever it was initially. So now that we're not changing anything, this should constantly be updating that to the same thing that it was. Let's see if it works so far. We refresh here. Still seems to be working the same. Now we animate that OBJ and animate like so. What we want to animate, the target is the obj, that's the object. The value, the property that we want to animate is sp, and we want to animate that to, well, we were at 10, let's animate it to 30, say. And in some amount of time, in two seconds, uh, we would want to rewind that too, which means we should probably go to the but we have to get past easing and callbacks and all this kind of stuff like that. So let's go to the Zimduo technique. And that is the target. And this one is the OBJ, confusingly. This one is the time. You getting good at these guys? And comma, rewind, colon true. Um, and also a loop colon true. So we'll both loop and rewind. Now what we're doing is we're animating this object's SP property, and then in a ticker we're applying that object's S. What did I do there? We're applying that object's SP property to the uh, spacing. So we refresh here. Yeah, it looks like it's going. It looks. Does it look like it's going forward and backwards a little bit? It, it's kind of hard to tell. Let's uh, bump this up to even more than um, about 100. And it should be operating on both of these. Yeah, that's definitely happening. Neat. So if we if we animated not only that but the the size. Uh, then we would get um, uh, kind of a neat effect. Now, 
can't see the spacing to 100. If we wanted the size, it would be obj dot size. Now, we should have just said spacing there. Now that we put it on an obj, it doesn't matter that we we just short cut it there. We can say spacing here. And comma size, <laughs> colon size. Is that what got sent in? Yeah, size and spacing. And obj's dot size and spacing now is what we're going to be doing there. And we're animating the obj's spacing in two seconds. And we would also animate the size. Oh, this is spacing now. Spacing and the size to uh, what? What is the size to start? It was 30. Uh, we can go to 60. This was twice as big. And let's see what happens now. Oh, we also have to at the same time, it, it does get bigger, but we would have probably wanted to keep that as uh, square thickness. And we were doing the object spacings. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So that's what I wanted to do the other night. Now it's moving too quick. I think what happens is as we make the size grow bigger, it's it's uh, making all of these things sort of shoot out. So it's not that part of it's not center regged in a sense. So it's going from one end of the line and shooting out from the one end of the line. I am not quite sure how to address that. I think we would have to we would have to counter that with a, an animation of the offset going the opposite way. Uh, so the offset would be moving the whole line to the left. Meanwhile the size growing bigger and we could probably get a balance at some point where these things would just shoot out at you. But cool, uh-huh. And that, my friends, has been a Zim Explore. Hopefully that wasn't too long. We threw a few extra things in there right at the end. But hey, that's what exploring's all about. I hope you liked it. I'm Dr. Abstract. Have a great night out in space. <laughs>